Hey guys, you asked for a video on how we access my port, so here it is. So the first step is washing hands. Peter is washing his hands at this moment. I have cystic fibrosis and when I needed IV antibiotics uh, quite a few times a year, they decided that it would be beneficial for me to have a port cath placed instead of getting pick lines. So. In 2005, they placed this port, and it has worked great, and I am so thankful for it. It is a pediatric barred port. It is single lumen, I believe is what it's called, and it is not a power port. It is just a plain old port, and <coughs> I use it for IV antibiotics. We do all of my port care, because it's easier for us that we have control over it and we don't have to wait for a nurse to come. Um, I learned how to do my own port care when I went to college, so I took care of it during my college years. And then once Peter and I got married, he took over my port care. There's Peter. Glad to be at your service. Thanks, babe. All right, let's do this thing. Okay, you wanna find somewhere where the person who's accessing your port will be able to reach you and somewhere where they will have space for their sterile field. Accessing your port can be done by yourself, but it requires multiple pairs of sterile gloves and being a bit creative. So if possible, having a second set of hands is helpful. Now if you want to, you can use a numbing cream ahead of time. You just put the numbing cream on and leave it on there for about a half hour. I don't use it anymore, I used to, but I've decided it's a quick pain, so I would rather just deal with the pain. But totally up to you, your choice. Okay guys, after you have your surface all ready and Mary's in place, you wanna make sure you have all your supplies you need. So we have a dressing change kit, we have a needle, a tegaderm. Often the dressing change kits come with a tegaderm, but Mary has one that she likes, and we'll show you the difference here in a minute. And then we have uh, right now we're doing a flush of Mary's port, so we have some heparin and a cap for the line. Before we do the heparin, there's some saline in the dressing kit change kit. So if your dressing change kit doesn't have saline, you're going to want to have that ready as well. Let's get started. You want to make sure that we stay sterile, so I'm just touching the edge of this as I open it. There's a mask usually right on top, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on just to protect Mary's all we get going. What I want to do before I put the gloves on is I'm going to grab the sterile field and I'm going to open up. And as you're putting a sterile field down, since you're not sterile at this moment, you only want to touch the edge. And then once you're sterile, don't touch the edge that you touched. Just keep in mind where it's sterile and where it's not and be careful. Now that the field's out, I'm going to take all of the elements, such as the needle, open the package, and dump it out without touching. I'm gonna dump another needle just so I can show you guys the difference between the two. We have the cap, and Mary's take a derm. And since we're gonna do the heparin afterward, we don't need to put it on the sterile field. Now that I have all everything opened, I can put on the gloves. So I touched the rim down here where that's not going to be touching anything in the process. Okay, now that I have my gloves on, I'm going to set up my station. So I've got my tegaderm, don't need that yet, but I'm going to grab her needle and I'm going to connect it to the cap. So take off the end, take off the end of the cap, these two just screw on together. So that is ready. There are different needles. The needles that you use for a port cath are called Huber needles. Some people call them gripper needles. Basically, it's a needle that is bent so that when you stick it into the port, it's not sticking straight out. So there are many different styles of needles. Some have safety mechanism on them. So here's one with a safety mechanism. And how it works is you would put it into your port and then, when you need to take it out, once you pull it out of the port, then it's got this black safety thing that you can push down, and it kind of caps the needle off. So it works just like this. Once 
So this would be after she's de-accessed. This little safety device clips over the needle and so it protects it the person up. from getting poked. The benefit of that is that you've got a little case for the needle afterward. For me, the reason I'm choosing not to use that is because it has that extra bit of plastic on it. And since when I'm on IVs, this needle is gonna stay in me for a week, I would choose not to have extra plastic taped on my chest for a week. But if that's the needle that feels best for you, use it. Like, I, I would just say look into different brands and see what your hospital offers and try out different brands and see what works best for you. I use a three quarter inch 22 gauge needle. Um, depending on how deep your, your port is implanted, you need a longer or shorter needle. My port is in between sizes. I need a half inch needle or a three quarter inch. It's kind of in between, so that's kind of tricky, but I'm using a three quarter inch. It's a little bit too long, but that's the only thing that works for right now, so that's what we gotta use. So, the reason I like this needle, it is minimalistic. It has these two little plastic wings and the needle and the tube, and that is it. It, it fits pretty flat on my chest, and when I tape it down, there's no big plastic things sticking out or anything. It's pretty simple, I like that. So that's why I've chosen this needle. So next, now that we have the needle set up, we're gonna grab one of the sterile salines. If your kit does not come with a sterile saline, you're gonna have to have somebody else help you with this part. So if it didn't have that saline in there, I would have a saline in my hand, keep, it, keep the end of it sterile, take off the cap, prepare the syringe, take the air out, and then I would hold the syringe up and we would keep it sterile and hook up the syringe. Then I would press the syringe. But since the syringe comes in this kit, he can do it all and keep sterile. Okay, so to hook up the saline, we take off the cap and first we wanna get all the air out of the syringe. So, little tip, pull down before you push up. That way it doesn't shoot across the room. So now that I have all of the air out, I just screw it onto the cap unclip the line and then flush the saline through until it's coming out then you want to clamp the cap down toward the cap end not toward the needle so it's not in the way of the tegaderm. The next step is cleaning my skin and the port and getting it ready. So here is Chloroprep. Mine comes in this foil pack with three swabs in it. Yours might come in a little paintbrushy thing that you clamp the sides and then shake it and then it, it's ready to go. I prefer that style but this is what it comes with so this is what we're going to use. So basically what you want to do is clean the area thoroughly. So as you can see he's starting at the port and working his way out and this is a cleaning solution that's meant to get things sterile. One tip I have for you guys, I have learned over the years that it's important to clean every speck that is going to be covered by the dressing. If the very edge of your skin was not cleaned and the edge of the um, dressing goes there, it doesn't stick well. So make sure you clean a bigger spot than your dressing is gonna be on just to make sure it sticks okay. So he's on the second swab and now we're gonna do the third swab. It's just being very thorough. You don't want to blow it off or fan it off, just let it air dry. Yep. It gives you a moment of suspense before we stick the needle in. Ah! <laughs> okay, so let's talk about right, right before you stick the needle in. Spread the skin and brace the port. Really important. So I'm sure everybody's port is different. Mine wiggles quite a lot, so it's really important to hold it so they brace it in place, and then with the other hand, he'll stick the needle in. And yeah, it's going through my skin, so I'll feel it. Sometimes I feel it more than others. Sometimes I barely feel it, sometimes it hurts. Whatever, it's quick, and then it'll be over. So now that my skin is sterile, it's really important that I don't touch it anymore. Everything has to be done with his sterile gloves on. We're gonna take the needle along with the syringe, and you're gonna to wanna to hold the two wings. Or whatever style needle you have. Yeah, 
hold, hold the needle. It Basically, you want to get a secure grip on it. With this needle, I'm going to hold those two wings, and then I'm going to come to her port. And like Mary said, it's important to brace the port well. So I'm going to stretch the skin, not too far, but just spread the skin across her port, and I'm going to grab the port securely. Okay, now that I have it secure, I'm going to just go in and in one fell swoop, put the needle in. It was good, I barely felt it. So if the syringe falls on a place like on my shirt or something, I would be the one to do the syringe, but since it's still on that sterile dressing, he can do it. But what you're gonna have to do is do the cap for okay. the clamp. clamp. And now I'm going to- So it's to unclamped. Flush. Working? Yep. Okay, flushing. The saline's going in, and then we're just gonna do a quick little- Okay, there's gonna be blood. Warning, warning. I'm gonna do a quick little drawback just to make sure we're getting blood return, and there it is. Okay, awesome. So if you're in the right place in the port, you should have easy to flush and blood return. If you don't get blood return, maybe you're in the wrong spot, or maybe your port's having an issue. Not a huge deal, potentially, but definitely call somebody. And if you can't flush, means you're in the wrong spot. Or you have an issue. Figure it out. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> All right, so he's just twisting it around. The needle's fine. It's not going anywhere. And he's going to go ahead and lay the syringe down on my shirt because he doesn't need to touch it anymore. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the needle in the position I want by just pulling this over here. It's not putting tension on my skin or anything, it's just twisting. So I like the, the, the tube to be coming straight down, pretty much. And here's what we've learned to do over the years. Take a little piece of gauze, since my needle is a little bit too long, we put a little piece of gauze, fold it nicely so it looks really nice and neat, and put it under those black wings, just to add a little cushion. And note that Peter is still fully sterile. He hasn't touched anything. The gauze is out of the sterile dressing change kit. All right, so now that the gauze is in place, we do not let the gauze touch the needle. That's how we prefer it. Okay, the dressing is the next step. You can choose whatever dressing you like best. The dressing change kit, for my, for my dressing change kit, it comes with a tegaderm with gauze on the outside. I have found that that gauze dressing peels off after just a day or two. It doesn't stick as well, so I've chosen to use the plain Tegaderm. And it, for me, I have found it really important to get no bubbles or try to get no bubbles under the dressing. So here's the two different Tegaderms. The one has, you'll see, I'll open it up, it has gauze here on the inside of the Tegaderm. So I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that is, but Mary doesn't prefer it. So now, time for the Tegaderm. What I'm gonna do first is make sure that her needle and her line are exactly the way I want it when I put the Tegaderm down. Then I'm gonna take the backing off of the Tegaderm. Remember, you wanna stay sterile until you're done this process. I want to take the Tegaderm and I'm gonna place it First, just lightly touch it down on the top quarter of it, down on the needle, so that that's touching. Then I'm gonna put the top edge edge down first. Can you grab your shirt, pull it over a little bit. Then I'm gonna slowly work my way around. Pressing the edges. Pressing the edges down. So we're going slowly because we don't want to get bubbles or wrinkles. So I'm going to pull this line up to the top of the Tegaderm as I'm doing the bottom edge. And as I put it down, I'm going to do a little pinch right or around the line, right before I press down the bottom edge. And as I push that down, it's gonna leave a little bit of flexibility here 
and it'll seal around that tube. So then I have all the edges down and I'm gonna slowly start at this edge and I'm gonna make my way taking off the, the backing of the tegaderm. The paper perimeter. And it's important to press down the edge like he's doing as you can see because if you don't press it down right away, it has issues sealing. Yep. So there we go. I'm just gonna do it all the way around. All right, so there it is. Wow, and at this point, I don't need to remain sterile because Mary is fully covered. Life with a needle in your chest. Life with a needle in your chest. So basically, right now, as you can see, there is some air under the dressing, which that will dissipate within about an hour, and then this, the dressing will be flat down against my skin. Um, so at this point, the syringe is still attached, so I can go ahead and take that off and situate myself. Um, I like to put um, an IV extension. Obviously, you have to do this in a sterile manner, but you can take the cap off, put an extension on it, so it, when it goes down your shirt, when you're in the middle of a store hooking up your IV, you don't have to hike your shirt up. You can just pull the little extension out. Um, so now that he flushed it with saline, it's time to use 100 unit heparin, and my part takes five cc's of that. And this is just for Mary's monthly flush. Yeah, so once a month, it is important to flush your port so that the tubing inside doesn't get clogged with blood or whatever it could get clogged with. And so, normally for a monthly flush, we wouldn't put a tegger derm yeah. on because we just need to do the flush and take out the needle, but we wanted to show you guys how we do it. So now I'm gonna rip the dressing off for you guys. <coughs> okay, you guys, so now that I'm flushed and finished, it's time to take the dressing off, and here is how I do it. I just start at a corner, and I'm already flushed and clamped. I can take this off, that's fine. Um, start at the corner and just start peeling. Peel around the edges. I'm gonna look down at my port because that's I need I need to. So to deaccess my port, what I do is I take the dressing off until it's just around. There we go. Fold the wings back. Brace your port and pull it out. Super easy. All done. Ta-da! Thanks for watching, guys. I hope it was educational. Yeah, and if you want to become independent with your port care, work with your team of doctors, your home care company, and uh, have a conversation about how you can become independent with yeah. your care. And they can walk you through the steps. They might do the process a little bit differently. Um, but again, the main important thing is stay sterile and just keep your mind focused on okay what have my hands touched what is sterile what is not and just stay focused and you can do it oh and one last thing guys it's really important that once you take your needle out you sing a song and it goes like this I ain't got no needle in my chest in my chest I ain't got no needle in my chest yeah if you guys want to watch our daily videos, we make new videos every day showing everyday life with cystic fibrosis. And usually it's not this awkward of an angle. <laughs> well, we will see, see you, you tomorrow. tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye.